Welcome back, this is Heidi from My Reading Life, and I'm here today to do a bit of a different video. Um, I've been thinking for a long time that I'd like to talk to you all about my reading log and also a couple of reading projects that ha have been ongoing for quite a bit of time in my life. Um, I am a big fan of reading projects and I have to restrict myself <laughs> to not taking on too many at one time, but it, it is something that I do enjoy, so I'd like to talk to you all about it. Um, first of all, my reading log, which I've mentioned before on this channel, um, and some of you have asked that I uh, show it on, on a video, um, and I have a clip that I'll insert in a few minutes, um, which will describe it in more detail, but I have my current um, reading log, which I keep here in this composition notebook. I came to uh, keeping track of my reads kind of late in life. I've always been a big reader, but I didn't in my younger years and when I was a child and through college I didn't track um, year to year what I was reading I didn't write it down anywhere I didn't make a note of it and then sometime in the early 2000s um, for whatever reason I decided to start writing it down and at first I would just write it in my daily planner um, I would know you know when I read it a book or when I completed a book just the title and the author's name and it has since evolved into a much more um, thorough uh, recording of what I read and characteristics of those each of those reads. So I will insert that clip here. This is my current reading journal. Um, I've been keeping my uh, reads in this book since 2014. Um, when I started, I used sort of a general entry style um, where I would write down the title, the author, the date I finished it, the genre, and then the source, um, where I, I, not the source, uh, yes, the source and um, the type of read. So whether it was my my own book that I owned and whether it was paperback, hardcover, or ebook, that type of thing. This year I switched it up into a more um, spreadsheet style. This is a completed spread that I just finished last night. Um, I finished my 98th book last night, so when I did that entry, I needed to create a new spread, and this is what it looks like when I haven't had any entries, and I figured I would go down through each, um, each characteristic that I am tracking for my reads. So this first column is number, um, and this is just the number book in the year that I've completed. Like I said, I read my 98th book um, last night, so this would be 99, the next book that I finish. Then date, which is the date the day that I finished the book, title of the book, author, and then genre. This next page is for a little bit more detailed information that I haven't always tracked, but I've started to track within the last year or two. The first one is source. Um, source is whether I own the book, whether I borrowed it from the library, or whether it was borrowed um, from a friend or family member. Type is uh, the format that the book is in, so either paperback, hardback, ebook, or audiobook. Diversity is um, a characteristic that I've been tracking only for the last year or so, and this was because I realized that the majority of the books that I was reading were um, about white people, basically, and they were either American or English authors. And I wanted to broaden out my reading so that I got more stories and more stories about people that are not like me. So I, I this is a yes or no column for me, um, and it has to do. It could either be checked yes because the author is a different race than me or a different religion than me or a different sexuality than me or it could be because the book is about um, folks that are different from me in those ways. It could be, you know, uh, an author that's from uh, a country other than uh, America or the United States or the UK, something like that that I feel um, is diverse from my own personal life. And then I track author gender, just male or female, or both if it's written by multiple people. And then a rating. Um, rating is really something that I haven't always tracked. And this is the first year really that I've, I've put this in here. I don't find ratings to be super useful to me because I either like it or find it kind of okay or I dislike it <laughs> for the most part. I don't have much... I don't have much subtleties when it comes to my uh, personal ratings, but I'm trying this year to give ratings and to see how that goes. And then at the beginning of the year, I wanted to track pages read, um, and you can see that I'm kind of falling down on that is the pages column here, because 
I listen to audiobooks, a lot of audiobooks, and some ebooks don't have pages, and then I just never bother to go back and look up how many pages were in those reads. So, you know, I don't page page tracking is not really working for me. And then I have this blank column here that I sometimes fill in with a little comment about if it's a nonfiction book, kind of what the the main subject is, or some other little comment about the read that I might want to remember. And I'm really liking this format um, of, of tracking my reading rather than the sort of the general journal entry um, format. And I think I will continue with this in 2018. Um, I really like how, how this is laid out and it appeals to my uh, personal love of spreadsheets and lists. And uh, it'll, it will allow me to um, calculate up my statistics at the end of the year a lot uh, more easily. And now to talk about a couple of reading projects that have been ongoing in my life for several years now. The first one is um, one that I have been working on since I was in high school. When I was in high school, one of my favorite teachers, um, when I was a junior or a senior in high school, gave me this memographed, um, before Xerox came along, sheet of a recommended reading list for college-bound students. It's three pages, typed, and then mimographed. Um, 75 titles of classics that were recommended for kids that were going on to college. Well, of course, I didn't read all of the titles on this list before I went to college. And then, since I graduated from college, you know, it's been a goal of mine to complete this list. At first, I wanted to um, complete it before I turned 40, and that didn't happen. Um, and I currently only have nine titles left from that list um, to complete. And I tend to read somewhere between six and ten classics a year. Um, I try to read several of them a year just to try to get through this list. But in the last few years, it's been somewhere between six and ten. Sometimes I read classics that aren't on that list, so I don't always get the ones on the list. And sort of the nine that are left are ones that I've been putting off in my the ones that I'm least interested in, I guess. And so the titles are, of the ones that I have left, are Serrano de Bergerac by Edmund Rostand, Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, Hamlet by Shakespeare, um, which I think I have seen the movie for Hamlet, but I've never actually read the play, um, Look Homeward Angel by Thomas Wolfe, Macbeth by Shakespeare, The Naked and the Dead by Norman Mailer, A Portrait a Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce, The Stranger by Albert Camus, and Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Now, Uncle Tom's Cabin I did try to read at one point, and um, I just couldn't. The next reading challenge that I've been working on, and this one I've been working on for about three years, I think, is the Presidential Reading Challenge, whereby you read a biography of each of the U.S. presidents. Um, and I've been going in order. Uh, I started with Washington, and I am only currently on Lincoln. Well, 16th president, three years into it, I'm only getting to the 16th president. But the problem is, when I read some of these biographies, it sends me down these paths, these side paths of topics that have to do with that president's term, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, the Lewis and Clark expedition, which I read Stephen Ambrose's book about that, and then you know, some just multiple topics that I have been sent down these rabbit holes um, by reading the presidential biographies. And I want to take the time to do that because part of the whole point of this for me was that I felt like I didn't, you know, when you take history in the uh, United States in your public education, for one thing, you know, it's definitely U.S. centric. It's definitely uh, centric to the white experience. And so you don't get a true picture of history, nor do you get a complete picture of history. It's more like you start with the pilgrims every year and you never much progress beyond Washington crossing the Potomac. <laughs> and so there's all this history of our country that you just never get into and I think it's important to understand history. I'm currently um, immersed in trying to educate myself more on immigration, specifically U.S. immigration policy. And I go through these stages where I, I get interested in a specific topic or I want to learn more about a specific topic and I'll spend several months sort of reading um, in that topic or in a specific genre. And uh, I, I like to do that. I like to kind of follow my interests where they lead me and I like to think of myself 
as a reader who reads widely and I want to encourage myself to read widely all the time. So that's sort of me, a little bit more about me, how I track my reading and a couple of the uh, reading challenges that I've been working on for multiple years as I've talked about in a previous video. I'm also trying to complete the Book Riot Read Harder Challenge for 2017 um, and I will I've already done one video on that and I will be doing another video as I complete that challenge more closer to the end of the year. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and I'd love to hear more from any of you who also keep reading logs, how you do it, what you use to track it, um, and I've, I'm fascinated by that kind of thing. So please share in the comments below. Talk to you later.